X Deaths of Wolverine number three is one of the most game changing X Men comics of the Krakoa era, with Benjamin Percy and Federico Vicentini putting their feet on the gas and introducing one of the most exciting, unexpected ramp ups of narrative since House of X and Powers of Ten. This is a huge issue for the future of Marvel's mutants and the starting of some game changing events for the mutant Moira X. Today I'll answer. Why this is my favorite issue of X Lives and X Deaths of Wolverine. What is happening with timelines and lifelines here? What's the new direction for Moira X? And is it a good one? I'm debuting founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. Welcome to Kraken Krakoa. If you like the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel and Kraken Krakoa, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting here. It all helps me out a great deal. Casual Krakoa's my live streams where we talk about the day's X-Men comics and what's going on in the world of comics and pop culture airs pretty much every Wednesday, circa 515 Central Standard Time. Like and subscribe to the channel to get those updates when live streams are going, and come join us to come hang in the chat. I like to respond questions as they come in. Oh, BT Dev's spoilers for discussed comics, including X Dash Wolverine number three. Follow. Writer Benjamin Percy, artist Federico Vicentini, colors by D. Hill Lima, letters by Corey Pettit. First things first. Hell yeah to the Wolverines getting their shine in this issue. Since we're in the midst of an all-out Wolverine event for 10 weeks with the alternating X-Lives and X-Deaths, one of my greatest hopes was we'd bring in the full Wolverine family, including literal Wolverine Laura Kinney. And we get that here in Deaths number 3 with Laura, Gabby, and Ken. I also love any time Professor X rudely scares the bejesus out of mutants, and he makes the mistake of doing that here with Laura who attacks his psychic projection. So I'm winning all around basically from page one of this issue, and the hits don't stop. Now, throughout X Deaths, as Moira's gone on the run from Krakoa, there's been a subtle build of this tech entrepreneur, not the leader of Google, but doing Google stuff from their headquarters in Mountain View, California, named Arnib Shakladar, a new character for this story. And while his role's been unclear until now, more on this to come, we see Fay Logan, aka Phalanx Logan, aka the Wolverine from the future, out openly hunting him, or at least the appearance of hunting him, at a big tech conference, getting the attention of the CIA and our girl ex desk Dolores. This brings Faye Logan face to face with the Wolverines, and this is the point where the story truly sinks its claws into me. And before dissecting why, shouts to artist Federico Vicentini and D. Holima on colors for selling the hell out of an all out Wolverine battle royale. This art style has really gone, grown on me, bringing so much kinetic energy and pace. I love it. First, we have Faye Logan telling Laura, You can't come back from the dead later, indicating Krakoan resurrection will be destroyed at some point in his future. This isn't like a bombshell in and of itself, but it's the first we've seen of any personality and thought process from this Logan and immediately taps into those sweet days of future past vibes where a character from the future knows all about what is to come. The second piece is when Deken shows up, and he confirms that this is Logan from the future. Same scent, same identity, same dad. Now obviously the fact that this is Wolverine isn't news, but in the first two issues, the character seemed completely overwhelmed by the phalanx. Here there are signs of weakness, frailty, and humanity right down to Vicentini's breaking of the phalanx armor to show Wolverine's sad eyes and blown apart midsection. This stands out most with a broken Phalogan telling the crew, I know how each of you dies. A heartbreaking reveal, he's from a future where mutant kind has suffered greatly, the futures we are very familiar with as X-Men comics readers. Okay. So we mentioned all this Wolverine action is taking place at a product release that Arnab Shakladar was hosting. Well, naturally he gets away, but not before being taken hostage by Moira X, all part of her plan. To this point in X-Deaths, we've seen Moira totally up against the wall, to the point that last issue I even said I want to see her catch her breath, to get a sense of what she's thinking and what she'd do next. And that's exactly what we get here, convincing Shakladar to work with her under the assumption that a Fae Logan hunting her means in the future she'll likely have achieved her goal of what we believe to this point to be curing mutant kind, and that now they've sent a Wolverine to destroy her. And it's here that Percy shows his robot hand and sends the narrative in to overdrive. With Arnhem's rather quick agreement to collaborate, Moira convinces him to build a machine, a robot that she can upload her consciousness into, and as she puts it, guarantee my 11th life. 
the Eleventh Life. For those of you who may have forgotten, Moira, her mutant ability is reincarnation, going from lifeline to lifeline with the memory of what happened before. Her Eleventh Life is something that we've long talked about as the promised fabled Eleventh Life. Destiny, famously in House of X, tells her you may have, you only have ten lives, but you may have an eleventh if you make the right choice. Is putting her mind in a robot consciousness the right choice? We will see. Now, and we should also remember here, Arnab, with Epiphany Platforms, his actual business, aka not Google, uh, he works in artificial intelligence and memory implants, okay? And that's why he has the technological know-how to do these things. But uh, but most importantly, <laughs> most importantly, in other words here, Moira and Arnab are building a Nimrod and an Omega Sentinel for Moira, okay? Moira's post-human plan is to fully embrace the evolution of augmented intelligence, aka human plus machine. And just look how quickly Moira has adapted to humanity. Hardly, what, 72 hours from a lifetime of mutanthood? I am human, and I am robot, she says. For the entire Krakoa era, Moira has been the secret weapon, okay, making mutant ascension possible, and here she is sounding like the leader of Orcus or any classic anti-mutant group. Suddenly, Moira is the number one antagonist of the mutant nation, pure rage, revenge, and lifetimes of regret. It's not a subtle turn either. People certainly think of them as gods, Moira says, but they're devils. In ignoring, betraying, and hunting Moira, mutant kind has ensured their ultimate enemy. This is unquestionably going to be a tough pill for some readers. Because of an absolute dearth of Moira stories between House of X and Inferno, there's almost no buildup to sell in this moment. It feels fast, and that's simply irreparable at this stage. I'll always think burying Moira in the no place was a mistake story-wise, but given that sunk cost, I'm absolutely not going to do anything other than celebrate Percy amping up the stakes and clarity around narrative direction, and like I've been saying for weeks now, spending some of that valuable story capital. It's exactly what I've been wanting from X-Men comics through a stagnant later half of the Reign of X, and I'm not going to sit here now and pretend it's anything but exciting. As if that wasn't enough, X Deaths of Wolverine number three does deliver on a visit to year 1000, by my count, the first time we've seen any future X Men realities outside of Hickman's Hox Pox and Inferno. And the first time we've seen a scenario from one of Moira's lifelines replayed in a new context, replaying some familiar scenes of Moira and Wolverine in the preserve. Except this time, instead of working together to discover Homo Novisimus plans and send Moira on to her seventh life, Logan is surprised to see Moira still alive. And Moira here, already replete with techno-organic enhancements, including a sentinel arm cannon she uses to destroy Logan. Now, given the reference points, one of the big questions here is when, where, and how is this Moira and Logan year 1000 future happening? And as I see it, we have three options. One, it's Moira's sixth life, the first time we saw this. Two, it's the future of this timeline, Moira's tenth life. Three, it's a possible future of this timeline, Moira's 10th life, possibly the one Omega Sentinel comes from per Inferno 3, if you remember time-traveling Omega Sentinel, creating 10A and 10B timelines. Now, based on the credits page, which references Faye Logan from the same X timeline as all the other characters here, I think we can rule out Moira's 6th life. That's the comparison and the mirror in a part of Moira's history that allows her to understand sort of how and where this Phalanx Wolverine may have come from, but we haven't established lifeline travel yet. So instead, I think we're looking at the future of this timeline, and the pertinent question here is does Moira seek her revenge to kill the last mutant in Omega Sentinel's original timeline, the one where mutants always win, or is this the new future Omega Sentinel and Orcus have created, and the one everyone we're following in these stories is now on a path towards? As Faye Logan suggests too, there's an interesting mystery as to how Wolverine acquired Phalanx and time travel technology after being blasted to bits by Omoira Sentinel. The theory I feel most certain of, though, is I am also now convinced that this Omega Sentinel, the Omega Sentinel we know from the stories we've been reading from House of X and Powers of Tent, the one that revealed they were the mastermind behind Orcus in Jonathan Hickman written Inferno, is Moira herself. Not only is Moira putting herself into a Nimrod Omega Sentinel shell here, but it would certainly explain Omega Sentinel, founder of Orcus, literally using dialogue and sentence structure Moira used in House and Powers. Most famously, Moira saying, we always lose. And of course, Omoira's or Omega Sentinel saying here, the mutants always win. And how flipping cool is that? <laughs> Moira, as founder of Krakoa and Orcus, of Mutant Paradise and Humanity's Last Hope? What a freaking twist! That's so awesome! I love it! I don't know that it actually, again, like you can critique the build to this moment. There are valid critiques about the road to this point, but the actual development itself is flipping massive! X Deaths of Wolverine is as essential as anything in the Krakoa era of X-Men and is working hard to pay off years of X-Men plots and potential. 
I haven't been as into X Lives of Wolverine, but I do anticipate by the end of this, it's all going to come together now as well. I'm increasingly confident as this event goes on. The Krakoan for X Lives of Wolverine reads war stories. Um, it's going to be more, you know, we saw it the last time in X Lives that Wolverine was possessed by Omega Red now as they go through this time travel thing with Omega Red going back to kill Professor X. Listen, X Lives isn't hitting as hard, okay? But X Deaths is hitting hard. It is working for me. Uh, I want to know, what do you think of this issue? This is a bomb this is a major issue what kind of theories do you have what kind of reactions do you have to what's going on here with now what i am calling the omoira sentinel development i want to hear all about it in the comments let me know thank you to everybody over on patreon who supports comic book herald and the comic book herald youtube channel go to patreon.com slash comic book herald if you are so inclined thank you jesse w megan getman cole weathers professor x3769 richard renz adam chris murficka terranort pinball drew mike solomons matt mahoney joshua bentley and alma thank you very much for your generous support I'm Dave. You can find all my stuff at comicbookherald.com, at comicbookherald on Instagram and Twitter. Look for the best comics ever in my Marvel This Year podcast for more from me. But seriously, leave some comments, leave some theories. I want to engage with them. I want to talk about this, and I will be here for casual Krakoa live stream. In the meantime, thanks for listening, and enjoy the comics.